सर माई नेम इज सुमित कुमार अग्रवाल आई वॉज बॉर्न एंड ब्रॉट अप इन जयपटना विलेज इन कलहांडी डिस्ट्रिक्ट फ्रॉम वेयर आई हैव डन माई स्कूलिंग आई हैव डन माई इंटरमीडिएट स्टडीज फ्रॉम सरस्वती शिशु विद्या मंदिर नीलाकंठ नगर दे आर आफ्टर आई हैव डन माई बैचलर्स इन सिविल एंड एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम आई आई टी पटना इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन माई इंटरेस्ट इंक्लूड प्लेइंग एंड वॉचिंग क्रिकेट एंड टीचिंग वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स सो यू आर आई आई टी स्टूडेंट्स वाई वॉन्ट टू जॉइन सिविल सर्विस यू कैन गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड सो मच मॉर्निंग टू कंट्रीब्यूट टू इन द टेक्नोलॉजी एंड लाइक द इंजीनियरिंग फील्ड वाई वॉन्ट टू जॉइन सिविल सर्विस सर सिविल सर्विसेस आई बिलीव सर विल प्रोवाइड मी ए वाइड कैनवेस ऑफ अपॉर्चुनिटी सो दैट आई कैन वर्क फॉर पब्लिक वेलफेयर डायरेक्टली एंड नेशन बिल्डिंग ऑल्सो it gives me a sense of satisfaction that i'll be working for public welfare and lastly sir it also comes with a great career option with a great amount of dynamism okay so you have completed your um, uh, engineering you have uh, placed anywhere so no no sir i had not set for any placements because i have clear that i would prepare for civil services okay so you have political science optional yes sir so uh in russia ukraine war uh india uh, not voted against uh, russia even if uh, many media so that uh, they have uh, violated the human right violation and lot of people also killed in uh, ukraine so do you think that in abstain in the un security council we are indirectly supporting russia No, sir. I believe that we are not supporting Russia. India is on the not on the side of Russia, neither on the side of Ukraine. India is on the side of peace. So India is uh, India is voting for the dialogue and diplomacy to solve the uh, Russia-Ukraine crisis. And Russia, the reason for abstaining in the voting is Russia has been a time-tested friend since the Cold War era. So we are maintaining that, and we are also exercising the strategic autonomy by importing oil from Russia. So India has made its stance clear that India is on the side of peace. so how do you see that uh, g20 summit is happening in india in 2023 so what is the significance of g20 for india this year so g20 provides a great platform for india and at the moment where the world is going through a crisis of peace uh, and inflation for example we are the russia ukraine crisis has been longing for more than 1.5 years we are also facing inflation overall the rise in price of fuel food and fertilizer so it provides india a opportunity to showcase solidarity also the it provides a opportunity to show solidarity with the global south which is facing the climate crisis and the lack of climate financing so these are the multifaceted areas that india can target and it provides a very good opportunity to show our values of one nation one family one world okay have you heard about mission life yes sir i have heard about it is related to what sir it's related to environment protection it's uh, it stands for lifestyle for environment which our prime minister proposed in the cop 26 in the glasgow so how we can change in our lifestyle so that we can uh, it is it will help in protect the environment or we can uh, combat climate change sir it starts with any individual uh, if we starts managing ourselves like we in the individual level we can reduce for example plastic pollution if we if we have 140 crore population if we take one step each india will take 140 crore steps so the change has to begin from the ground level from us the citizens okay okay you belong to which place you know jaipatna in kalahandi oh patna in kalahandi jaipatna kalahandi yes sir in kalahandi there are lot of uh, i think uh, Scheduled tribe populations. Yes, sir. Their culture, their cultural identity is totally different. Yes. And uh, government of India wants to go through UCC. Okay. So how could you reconcile the right of the minority to protect their identities through their cultural values, through their religious practices and issues? so imposing ucc on them will have a significant impact because many tribal population in india the many tribes 
there are matrilinear matrilinear in their culture so if you uh, yes sir in kalahandi also there are matrilinear tribes there are uh, it means inheritance go through the, the mother side yes 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 sir okay. so that will be have an impact if you impose ucc so they are, there are many tribes in uh, across india like in manipur also there are uh, meghalaya also there are many tribes like garo khasi they are also opposing that imposing against the imposition of ucc however government should, should uh, try to build consensus before taking any step uh, suppose you see in this suggest one thing gender justice okay in most of the religion you find that gender gender justice is not there it, it is valid of article 14 that the states are not discriminate against any religion or gender so if the ucc and we suggest that there should be justice given to the women respect to inheritance respect to divorce and how does that affect the tribes so law commission has also said that uh, previous law commission that ucc at this moment is not desirable neither necessary rather what we can do is we can individually 21st law commission yes sir individually reform the religions among the that the women of that religion are not discriminated for example we can take a religion separately and for example we did that in the banning of triple talaq so we are taking good steps and there is no, uh, if you impose ucc there it will kill the diversity which is our so soft power was banned, banned because uh, there was a judicial verdict against triple talaq yes sir and the court gives gave a direction to the parliament to pass a law banning triple talaq so the impetus comes from the courts the initiative doesn't come from the parliament or legislature because they are playing with politics all right uh, second is uh, you you are a technical man isn't it yes sir okay so how do you look at uh, artificial intelligence because there is a perception there is a fear apprehension that if artificial intelligence is introduced that will that will be disruptive a lot of people will lose their job but that will create job for the high end high skilled people so how artificial intelligence and uh, loss of job the two contradictory terms how do we consider both so whenever there has been any technological evolution this has been the debate since the past two centuries that people will lose job that will kill jobs at the but uh, sir i feel if artificial intelligence comes and it is a welcome move we should upskill ourselves and reskill ourselves so that we upskill the entire population 50% people are illiterate they do not have any technical skills that is a huge herculean task formidable task to do it, so it right now so it will be a gradual process and government is doing it uh, step by step when there is a displacement with the introduction of artificial intelligence that displacement that mean job losses how government will reconcile that how to, what steps government would contemplate to address these issues it will create revolution that will get yes sir so some uh, turbulence and all these things so it will create more job in the technological sector and if we provide the new uh, if we provide proper education for example we have formulated the new education policy of 2000 intelligence will serve more the middle class high skill workers that is serve the farmers the artisans people living in the rural remote areas i believe sir it will serve oh. every society for example sir in the farmers case it will improve the productivity it can predict the weather better in a better manner it can uh, provide the farmer with up to date information so that he or she can manage the farms and it will improve the productivity in case of rural areas or or the in the disaster management also sir the rural areas or the hilly areas are more affected so it can help in disaster management also it will enable us to take the government services to the management disaster climate disaster yes sir it's an offshoot of climate change yes sir bigger issue that is a global phenomenon yes sir and how to reduce the carbon footprints what go steps government of india has taken to reduce the carbon footprints so we have taken many steps uh, we can take it in the two branches for adopt adaptation and mitigation for mitigation we are um, uh, we are focusing on the afforestation and for the uh, adaptation we are employing the more technological solution like we are promoting the electric vehicles we are promoting biofuels so these are the steps yes sir biofuels. biofuels okay that's it
you being a bureaucrats, just assume that you are a bureaucrats, posted as uh, district collectors, how could you use technology to improve governance and administrative uh, ability, functional abilities? Sir, we can use the technology. At present, what technology can be used yes. to improve the administration of the district? So at present technology can be used uh, to use? so that the civil servants are more approachable if you use the social media for example if you use twitter directly we can connect to the district collector and we can uh, address our grievances so this media can help the civil servant being more approachable the and more transparent and it will inculcate a sense of uh, it will inculcate a sense of approachability among the people and it will give them more confidence that it is being used yes nowadays. yes but what innovative technology you perceive which can be used to improve the administrations more technological breakthrough or technological um, uh, approach can be used for the improvement of administrations what more sir technology the digital technology or the communication technology it will create a coordination among various department it will help the people filing E cases, for example, it will go help in paperless administration, and it will be more transparent, and the total administration will be more accountable to the people. And I give one practical example in Odisha. What is implemented? Sir, so at the moment I am not IT, able to recall. So IT, yeah, IT, one of the T is technology in that. So in that uh, directly, we are uh, giving uh, technology can use in uh, jam training. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, also the common service center where you can apply everything for the, all the document. You can directly apply, yes. apply online. Okay. So if you look at the adverse side of use of technology, more use technology, more the privacy of the individual is invaded. It amounts to intrusion into the privacy of the individuals. In a Putuswami case, the Supreme Court always said the right to privacy is a fundamental rights. Okay. So, using of technologies, collecting data, uh, does it not uh, lead to violation of right to privacy? How the two will be coincide? Can Government of India take away all the data from the citizens in the, in the name of Security of India? So that means state will put you under surveillance and you will lose your privacy. So, here is a conflict, use of technologies and right to privacy, which is a fundamental right, and guaranteed under the Constitution of India and Article 21. What you have? What, what's your view on that? Is sir, contradicted? sir, in the Puttu Swami case, uh, uh, Supreme Court has uh, categorically said that government can intervene. The in right to privacy is not sacrosanct, and government can intervene provided that it is reasonable. So that, for for example, in the Pegasus case, uh, the Supreme Court made a committee, but it found nothing. But in my opinion, it was a violation of right to privacy in the name of national security. So the law has to be reasonable and it, it, it has to be a balance between the right to privacy and the national security. Should be there. Yes, sir. So there should be an independent committee or Which, institutionalized system yes, sir. that will monitor whether the state is, has a right to interfere yes. here. It should be reasonable. Because that amounts to violation of privacy. You are interested in cricket, isn't yes. it? Yes, sir. You know, there is a cricket match going on between in, between Australia and England and it's called Assess. Why it is called Assess? Uh, sir, it was in 18, 19th century that once Australia lost to, uh, in, in, sorry, England lost to Australia and uh, it was a test, uh, test series in the uh, England. So when the Australia team returned, there was a uh, newspaper which printed a article that Australia is taking the England cricket team is dead and Australia is taking the ashes with them. So the name comes from that article. Okay. Do you think that 2020 cricket is destroying the test cricket because 2020 cricket is more commercial? Instant cricket, drawing people to the galleries, lot of ads, more commercialized than a than lot of uh, what you say, the cheer girls. Uh, dancing, a lot of erotism, that draws a lot of revenue, that's true, but does it kill the test cricket? The test cricket is the real cricket, okay? So what's your view on that? 
तो ये आई एग्री दैट टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट हैज आफ्टर द कमिंग ऑफ टी ट्वेंटी क्रिकेट द पॉपुलरिटी ऑफ टेस्ट क्रिकेट ऑल्सो ऑफ द ओडीआई क्रिकेट हैज डिक्रीज सिग्निफिकेंटली बट इफ वी से एज आई वी मैंशन अबाउट एश एस वी वी सी द एश एस सीरीज द स्टैंड आर फुल विदाउट एनी चेयर गर्ल्स विदाउट एनी द इट इज प्रॉपर टेस्ट क्रिकेट एंड द स्टेडियम्स आर फुल सो इट इज डिपेंड्स ऑन द कल्चर ऑफ द पीपल एंड टेस्ट क्रिकेट इज मोर मोर कोवेटेड इन इंग्लैंड एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया इन कंपेयर टू इंडिया also sir if we say people want to watch quality cricket between two teams if, the, if australia is competitive england is also competitive so the team how which are the format the if the two teams are competitive people will scale, watch skill is more compatible with test cricket yes sir in stand cricket you can go for any type of sorts agriculture sorts improvised sorts and all these things to entertain the crowd so you play to the gallery here you play to the to according to your skills okay. There's a difference, I think. No, sir. I believe if you play, uh, recently was the England team, the uh, they have uh, changed the definition of Test cricket. And they are playing innovation shots like the reverse sweep, the sweeps, the scoops. They are all playing the, uh, the these kind of shots to entertain the crowd. And these are also a matter of skill. The innovation, I feel, the innovative shots are matter of skill also. Yes, skill. Yes, sir. But they do not. But these people, where these cricketers, where they are recruited or selected for Test cricket, they are very sore nights. Also happens. Actually, if you compare Tendulkar with the Gavaskar, according to you, who is the better batsman, or it is not comparable? Sir, so, I believe that we should not compare individuals because they have played in different time and different space. They have faced different types of bowlers, so they were completely in the different era. So we we should not compare individuals, but we can admire the talents. In how many ways a batsman can be out? How many type of outs are there? He can be bold. He can be leg before wicket. He can be caught. He can be run out. He can run out. Run out. Next, next. He can be stumped out. Then he can be out for obstructing the field. Obstructing the field. So this is much six six. I can. Then another is hit wicket. Oh yes sir. Okay. Thank you for that enlightening. Is time out, I think. Yes sir. Time out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The batsman is out. He goes yes, back sir. to the pavilion. Another man and yes. the batsman should walk in. They will cross yes. on the field. Yes. If it is delayed, then the umpire will raise his hand. So one wicket is down. Okay. Very good answers. What is Vedic mathematics? So it is an ancient form of calculation and mathematics. We can do calculation much faster without using pen and paper, and accuracy is quite high. And I feel it should be promoted more. And because I have uh, studied in the Saraswati Sri Vidya Mandir, it was promoted there. And these skills actually help uh, help me in the preparation in the IIT JEE also. So these little things should be promoted. You you have completed uh, uh, engineering in IIT. Yes, sir. So what makes you to become a bureaucrat? Being an engineer, you can go abroad, earn a lot of money. There are a lot of scopes nowadays. Sir, artificial intelligence, robotic technology. These are the new fields opening up for the engineers. So you can contribute there also. Yes, sir. You can go into research. You can develop. You can become innovative. So a lot of opportunity for creativity in those areas. So what make you? What makes you change your ambition from being an engineer? Because going into engineering, spending a lot of money is still wasted of money. Money. Mm -hmm. Even there, then that's a wasted of money for the country also. I feel the so money. So I feel the money. is not wasted we cannot uh, measure the skills i have learned like the problem solving skills the stress management the their skills learned at the iit with any material things and we should not go waste and it will not go waste because those skills i can surely use in the civil service and ultimately i will be working for the public welfare so my skills and my capabilities will be used and it will not go as waste okay so as a civil civil engineer How do you contribute? Uh, how how do you think that you will utilize your knowledge in the civil service, sir? Sir, as I mentioned, the courses at my uh, the engineering college were designed that we have learned how to solve problems, how how to be analytical. No, how I to am telling about your civil engineering okay. knowledge. Sir, uh, in uh, in specific terms, uh, in the technological term, I have been not been in touch with the uh, the. subject for the 3 4 years but i can assure that i can work upon it and it will help me for example is for a civil engineer the cost of a project comes for 
is a, is a big role. So he or she, he or she has learned how to complete a task within a certain specified cost. So I can use that skill in the civil service also because I can I can learn the how I can uh, utilize the public money efficiently. One more thing, sir, I would like to add that uh, for a civil engineer, the safety of the labors are paramount. So in that skill, I can use in the civil services also because I have to. Uh, address the safety and the development of the vulnerable sections. So tell me, none of our IITs or uh, higher uh, education institutions are not in the top 100 list. So where is the problem? Why uh, do you think that we are not capable in the one ranking to get a 100 rank list? Or what is the major problem and what are the initiatives we are taking in that direction? So it is true that we are not in the top, top 100 of the QS ranking, but we are improving. For example, IIT Madras and IIT Delhi are closing. They are in the uh, between the 200 and IIC Bangalore also. So the main reason for it that we are not investing much more in the research field. For example, 0.7 percent of GDP is in uh, in the research field, and much more is coming from the government only. So there is a very less contribution from the private sector in the research. Okay. Another question is. The last two three years, if you take the if you look at the statistics, we find that more than one lakh high net worth individuals, mostly skilled, are the people who have money to invest abroad. They have left India. This is this is called exodus. They are leaving India. What is the reason for that? I am not sure about, but given a chance, I can try. Just to, to ask try, try to answer. Ask why did, uh, why did a student like you from IITs, they are preferred to go abroad and do some corporate job rather than research. They are not interested in research uh, like, like sir told that brain drain. So why, why such situation, situation is happening? So I can say that money is one factor for sure because the and the opportunity they get in the western countries. For example, they complete the MS and there they are exposed to many new technological inventions that are yet not present in India. So the western countries, for example, US, UK, they provide a lot of opportunity and flexibility and autonomy to the students as compared to India. And there is a main reason for the brain drain. So we don't have a scope here. We have better scope. We get better salaries. The culture is different. Very liberal cultures. Individuals can take initiative, can change his, uh, job here and there. There's a reason that India is sinking. No, sir. No, no, I would not say that. You know, in diplomacy, one term is used for India. That is called soft power. What is that soft power? So, so soft power is our civilizational values, our diaspora, they, nice. that attract other countries towards us. So that, 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 that means that is a, that's the value that India represents. And that has a lot of implication in international diplomacy. So whenever there is international issues, conflict, so Indian voice matters because it is in democracy, liberal, liberalism, secularism. Do you think these values are now under onslaught? No, sir. No, you don't see. No, sir. Okay. Okay. So aspirational district. Have you heard about aspirational district? Yes, sir. So, Kalahandi is coming under aspirational district? Yes, sir. Kalahandi comes under the Niti Aayog's so aspirational district. what are the district. parameters uh, which are, we are focused on aspirational district? Sir, so, there are five parameters, but I am unable to recall the, all of them. I can try. Uh, health and education, nutrition, uh, agriculture, infrastructure. These four I can think of. So, uh, Western Odisha people are demanding for a separate state, coastal state. Why they are demanding and uh, don't you, uh, do, do you think that government of Odisha is not doing enough for the development of uh, Western Odisha? So the socio-economic indicators of Western Odisha and Eastern Odisha, is, you can see a clearly a gap there. So there is been a case of regional disparity among the state, uh, districts of Western Odisha and Eastern Odisha. Example, also, example few examples. So, for example, Kalahandi literacy rate is only 60%, whereas the overall it is 72% of in Odisha. So, in the western state districts, for example, in Khorda, it is more than 80%. So, there has been a 20% gap of literacy rate, and it is in the case of the all health indicators also, the maternal mortality or infant mortality. 
so this is and the socio economic development the disparity in the socio economic development has been the root cause and it is not in the case of odisha it is it is happening all around india also there are in assam also in so there are there has been demand for inclusive uh, separate state and the root cause is lack of inclusive development so for addressing that the government of odisha to address the issue has started many uh, initiative for example we have established the western odisha development council and we have increased budget also uh, recently in the month of march uh, our honorable cm has announced the biju express way oh, so, that will go through kalandi yes sir, that will go through kalandi so these are the infrastructural gaps that government of india uh, government of odisha is trying so that an infrastructure is the mother of development so government is doing on the very right step and it will take time and for that uh, and until that we should we should be peaceful and not resort to any violence for any separate state so, so who is more elastic or upstream so i'm not sure but it's a rover i'm not sure so it is young model is the steel is more no? that is what steel is so i should have known that okay. What is the basic difference between proportional limit or elastic limit and flexural limit? I should have known it, but I am not aware. What is the objective of Chandrayaan 3? Sir, Chandrayaan 3 is the third moon mission we have launched uh, recently in the last week. Uh, the main core purpose of is to show the how to soft landing, how to do soft landing on moon on the surface of moon because it's a rocky surface. Secondly, we have to explore the surface and the moon and see if there is any uh, explore the surface of moon and uh, get insight into how the universe has evolved. So these are the two objectives. Okay. So yeah, Americans doing the same thing. What is the point in spending lot of money sending on the young India is a poor country? Why are you spending so much resources on this project? And just to resources. ask that point also. Last, last, uh, in last uh, operation also, Sandan 2, it is around 450 crore. Mm -hmm. It is failed. Do you think that we have wasted that 450 crore rather than mm -hmm. uh, involved spending so much on this? We can uh, involve in the, uh, like the education health where we have a lot of problem. Do you think that we are wasting unnecessary money in the space sector? So I feel no, it's a technological advancement and space sector has many utility and this is one of the failures and fail, I feel failure is, a, is another name of success. So b b there is, we cannot say that it has gone waste because the space technology has uh, wide, wide use. For example, in banking sector, the telecommunication, the navigation, so technology I understand, but education, moon, moon, when I'm going to moon, this moon project. Yes, sir. What is the purpose? What is the long term? Maybe it's some long term objective, but in short term, I think that that money could have been diverted for removing poverty, building infrastructures. Satellite is all that is said. We need satellites. Yes, sir. For its purpose, need other purposes. What about the Chandra Jar? Do you think the waste is money or not? So I feel it's not wastage of money because as compared to the other countries, we have done it in a most cost effective way. Because the cost of Chandrayaan 3 is less than half of many Hollywood movies also. So, we feel, I feel that it is not very, ISRO is a very cost effective institution. Technological breakthrough, scientific yes. research, moon, moon project, that is one aspect, poverty and the other aspect, that cannot, no, sir. Be, cannot be sharp, isn't it? No sir, they are interlinked. They are interlinked, but there is, a, there is one other dimension, another dimension. So, Speak. you... You have also got uh, all Odisha you 13th rank in plus 2. 10th. 10th. Yes, sir. Okay. So, tell me how do you think that philosophy will help you in civil service job? Sir, uh, sir, there are many great philosophers and, and the I would like to give example of, for example, Mahatma Gandhi. His advice of thinking of the poor and uh, Whenever in dilemma, thinking of the lower rung of the ladder, people at the bottom most of the pyramid. So this philosophy can help any civil servant whenever he is in ethical dilemma. So this is one cardinal philosophy that that would be very helpful. Okay. What is philosophy? So philosophy is. Can you define it? Love of wisdom. Yes, sir. Study of being. 
study of the ultimate realities, or the universal truth, study of being, the essence of life, all these things, the abstract issues. Things, okay? Yes. So, final question, why do you think that uh, you are best fit for this civil service? Sir? So, I cannot say that I am the best, but I have tried my best and if there is any issue, I will try to improve. But I cannot say that I am the best, but I ha I feel I have the all required cap abilities. And if there is any, I would be open to improve myself. Thank you. Okay. So, last question. What is your weakness? Sir, what I have uh, analyzed myself in the last 26 years, in my that might be my weakness is, I sometimes tend to overthink and over utilize the resources that I should not be on things that I should not be utilizing it. I do a lot of time in researching small things that that are some in the long term is not beneficial. So that leads to inefficiencies in my schedule. But I have devised a solution for that also that I tend to divide any work into micro micro things. For example, I set my targets for one hour rather than for for the day, and it has helped me to overcome my weakness. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice.